Virgo, welcome to February 2017. You're coming up on your half birthday. Your half birthday is when the sun is in your opposite sign and you have your full moon. That will come for you in March, but the sun does move into uh, Pisces on the 18th and Pisces is your opposite sign. And so you are moving towards that. In fact, the Leo lunar eclipse, which is the first in this series that's beginning here in 2017 and 2018, not only completes the eclipses for you, yay, you graduated. It begins now in another area of your life. So it moves from changes with self, changes in relationships, to going deeper with you, going deep into the subconscious, going deep into your unconscious, and working from that place of magic, really. The Leo full moon on the 10th of February brings that action to the 12th house, because Leo is your next door neighbor. Howdy, neighbor! <laughs> it's me, Virgo! Hello, Leo! And so, so you've got a big focus going on in that area of uh, working behind the scenes, finishing up projects, completions, and how you create life-work balance for yourself. So you're really looking at that in February is how do I go about living my best life? Now I know for some of you, you're really in the depths of the Saturn challenges or perhaps you know, the Neptune energy has been uh, overwhelming for you. Cycles always change. You can have great cycles. They don't last either, <laughs> you know. And then you can have really challenging cycles. The good news is they don't last, they don't last either. And so at this time, it is about you really looking at how you're using your resources, your energy, because you do have this dynamic opportunity with this Leo full moon because there's a grand fire trine happening off of the moon to Saturn in that area of your foundation. How you strengthen yourself, how you build your reserves, your emotional, your spiritual, your mental, your uh, physical, uh, and as well as your financial reserves. To Uranus in the area of your power, intimacy, how you use your power, where you need to set boundaries, where you need to make some changes. Uranus is in that area of other people's values, other people's resources. This is an area where if we wanted a car loan or a student loan or a house loan, this is the area that we would draw that resource from. Jupiter is in the area of earned income how you use your resources, your time, your energy. And they are making a magical connection that can bring sudden windfall, sudden opportunity, sudden breakthrough. Now it's not going to be, you know, like you win the lottery, although anything's possible. It's more about how you're using your talent, your gifts, your skills to create abundance for yourself and the universe adds to that. So this is um, a harmonious full moon here on the 10th in that it is in harmony with Uranus and Saturn forming that gorgeous grand fire trine and Jupiter is sextile the moon and trine the sun. So there's something really happening here with you that it's in regards to your work that's bringing you uh, greater prosperity, greater wealth, and you know, if you're not feeling it as you go into February, like maybe some of you are feeling kind of stuck, like I don't know where I'm supposed to make my next move, or I don't know, uh, you know, how to really tap into this abundant energy and prosperity, where do you need to make an adjustment? Do you need to set a boundary? Is, is there someone in your life distracting you? Are relatives distracting you? Are friends distracting you? Are clients distracting you? Who may be in your life that could be distracting you? 
and what adjustment can you make? Because I, what I'm seeing is, as soon as you make that adjustment, everything opens up for you. And you are the master of details. And I see you having so much fun in the details of whatever you're cooking up. So it's like you have this recipe going and you're adding these ingredients and you're stirring the pot and you're smelling the aromas and you're just so excited about some project you're working on or uh, something you're launching, a new job, a new home-based business, working with others, something that you're creating and it really opens you up here. So this is a time for you to really get ready for takeoff and see where you need to make that adjustment so that you are capitalizing on your resources. And again, resources are not just money, they're your time, they're your energy, they're your talent. And how are you using those resources and what is in the way? Maybe the adjustment needs to be something in your subconscious. You know, or you know, you know how we all have that inner critic, right? We're not good enough, we're not doing enough, oh you're too young, oh you're too old, oh you're you know, whatever. You know, and that could be coming up for you at the full moon eclipse. And that's the universe saying, Hey, Virgo, your perfection is in your imperfection. You don't have to be perfect because guess what? None of us are. <laughs> I am far from it. And so you want to be not holding yourself back because of some self-imposed limitation that makes you feel that you're not enough of something. You are more than enough. You're a hero just for being here on this planet. This is the only planet in all of cosmos where we have to balance all four lower bodies, the emotional, the spiritual, the mental, and the physical. We have to work on all four quadrants simultaneously. Everywhere else in the universe, you only work at one, on one at a time. So if you reincarnate to another planet, you'll only have to work on the mental quadrant, or the spiritual quadrant, or the emotional quadrant. But here on Earth, it's all four. And the mutable signs have really been challenged lately with the Saturn and the Neptune. And so, you know, and Saturn always exacts ideals for us that are not attainable, that are out of the reach, because it's about striving for your greatest, highest contribution, but not holding yourself back because you don't think it's good enough or, you know, Saturn is, is the one that can make us feel like um, we're not doing enough. And so if you can hear the plows out there, we just got a foot of snow last night and they're, they're digging out my house right now. And so I do apologize for the, uh, any noise distraction that may show up on the, uh, microphone. This microphone is so powerful, it picks everything up. Um, and, uh, you know, but this is, this is the time that I have to record. And so I have to do what I have to do. This is, look at this, this is the Saturn, right? I got to do what I have to do, but it's not going to be perfect because there could be background distractions going on. So that's it. And so Virgo, you know, what are those distractions? Is it coming from you? Is it coming from your own inner critic, the inner judge, right? Or is it coming from someone external in your life that's distracting you with their opinions or their um, ideas for you? This is about you making some sort of adjustment where you just say, hey, you know, I'm going to do what I came to do and I'm going to show up and do my best. And my best is going to be different from day to day depending on how I feel. If I feel great, I'm sure my best will be great. If I'm not feeling so great, it may not be my best is best. <laughs> my best is best. And so, um, yes, when there's not words, we make them up. <laughs> and, and so this is really important for you to allow for whatever coming up for you 
to to go right because you were just in this big cycle of having the eclipses in your sign which was requiring you to change and now they're behind the scenes which is more about cleaning house in the subconscious restoring yourself from all the growth work you've had to do um, you know these past couple of years and building up your energy building up your strength completions now it's really interesting about these eclipses full moons bring things to completion the, a full moon is always an opposition the Sun is in Aquarius the moon is in Leo oppositions are awarenesses that come to you they can come to you through other people for you where they're falling they could be coming from your own subconscious they be, your dreams your meditations uh, one of the ways you know it's a message from the universe is for you know for me is always like I keep hearing it you know is, is I keep hearing the same message whether it's you know from different people or you know when you turn on the TV you hear the message you know it's like whoa okay you know creators talking and so you could be getting messages you know from other people you could be getting messages from nature the animals you know and it is to remind you of one how much you're loved that you that you already are you were born perfect and finish up what needs finishing and begin what is about to begin for you because you know full moons bring things to conscious awareness full moons bring things that were beneath the surface that we didn't know about to our conscious awareness like wow I do do that I didn't know I do that and yet this is the first eclipse in Leo so there's new beginnings happening here with this Leo energy then you have the Pisces new moon eclipse new moons are always new beginnings so the best time to set your intention or start something is right at the new moon or or I always like to give it at least 12 hours 24 hours because the new moon is actually you can't see it so once that moon starts to crest that's when the light is gaining and that's the best time to start something new because as the moon is gaining light that means you have the momentum behind you Pisces is the last sign so yes it's a new moon but this is the last eclipse in Pisces for 19 years just like Virgo and Pisces is the last sign you don't begin things in Pisces you wait till the Sun goes into Aries that zero degree point of Aries is spring in the northern hemisphere fall in the southern hemisphere but it's also the first day of Western astrology our Western astrology comes out of that zero degree point when the Sun enters Aries for Western astrologers it's our happy new year and that's why there's no 13th sign as as the anti astrologers are trying to uh, project out there because it's not based on the constellations it originally was but it's the the way that the planets move it's a precession so it moves back just like we're moving from Pisces into the age of Aquarius we're not moving from Pisces to Aries we're moving from Pisces to Aquarius so we've moved uh, since thousands of years ago when we started Western astrology but we still follow the same uh, process and that means for Western astrology our calendar begins when the Sun enters Aries that zero degree point that equinox is the the starting date for all of us and that's when you begin things is is when the when the Sun is in uh, Aries right because that's the first sign Pisces is completions Pisces is um, all about finishing things up and I was just watching who was it I was watching um, I can't think of his name right now he's so good the group and they were talking about we're getting four waves of energy in 2017 and the first one is coming in March so these waves of energy that are coming in they're going to hit us right around the equinoxes and the solstices is what I'm getting so so you know so these waves of energy is is part of part of the challenge because you guys are so many of you are so spiritually advanced 
that it's hard to be on this planet when there's so many negative people. And the way Steve and uh, Steve and the group were saying is, when you're at a high vibration, and, and, and most people are at a low vibration, we're all in this together. You can't move up because they have to move up too. So these new waves of light that are coming in, they said is as powerful as the 12, 12, 12. Remember December 12, 2012? That was a game changer. We're getting four of those in 2017. In March, then in June, and then in September, and then in December. And they're going to be so powerful that they're going to move everybody up. So you're moving up this year. And it's because the light is going to move up the people at the bottom, which makes it easier for the high vibrational people to move up. So I find this very interesting. What's happening with you here in February and March is it's like the universe is coming in and saying, we got your back. And we know it's been hard. We know for some of you it's really been letting go of relationships, letting go of uh, jobs, money, health, situations. It's just been clean house, clean house, clean house. Well, there's a lot of supportive energy in here for you with this Saturn, Uranus, Jupiter happening and it is in your resources so there's money coming to you this year that's going to be very beneficial for you in the area of um, earned income as well as uh, if you're restructuring any kind of debt or if you want to um, take out a loan this is a good time to take out a loan your ruling planet is direct and he is flying forward mercury enters aquarius on february 7th then he enters pisces on february 25th so mercury is on the move that means you're on the move and these eclipses have you first focus in the area of your life and your work which is all about loving you taking care of you doing what's right for you taking time for you making sure that you're making your own rules to live by don't live by the rules of what others are doing don't follow their north star follow your north star and the north node is still in virgo so it is about you know following your own path and doing what's right for you and making your own rules and you know these are the hours I want to work these are the hours I want off these are the hours of you know what I want to do and you know work on this project or that project and and so make your own rules and what needs completions with you Right? What do you need to finish up? You're going to have the opportunity these first three weeks to really work behind the scenes and work on finishing projects. Perhaps you're dreaming and you're using that dream space to create the future, to create what you want. It's not always about action. You know, really it is about lining up the energy with what you need, lining up the energy with... Um, forward movement like lining up your energy for what you want to create so so visualize what you want to create visualize what it is you want in your life you know a lot of you've just been doing a lot of letting go and you're now at this place like I don't even know what I want right now or or maybe I just you know I want this or I want that I want love I want prosperity those are really general and those are good you know but perhaps you could define it by how it makes you feel right I'm with my soulmate and she really supports me. I'm with my soulmate and he has my back. He takes care of me and I take care of him. We're such a powerful partnership. Things like that. So describe what you want here in 2017, but do it based on how it makes you feel. As the energy moves into Pisces, that brings that focus to the area of relationships. Now this is important because you've got a very big focus going on here in the area of relationships. And this Pisces solar eclipse, it's the last eclipse and it is something else because Mercury is in Pisces, the south node is in Pisces, the sun and the moon are coupled together in Pisces. 
Neptune is in Pisces and he's direct. He is the god of the oceans. Pallas Athena, the asteroid of wisdom and truth, Pisces. Chiron, the wounded healer, Pisces. So this is now bringing your attention and focus from February 18th on to relationships, partnerships, other people, your public, which is going to be very requiring for you. So, you know, for those of you that work for yourself, it's going to bring many clients, it's going to bring many customers, it's going to bring many patients to you. And doors are opening here for you in this area of relationship. And so, you know, for those of you that are ready for a new relationship, this could open the door for a new relationship for you. Because this is the last eclipse in this area and then it's going to move to uh, Aquarius and that's going to bring the focus on the work and the health. And, you know, when Saturn moves into Capricorn, that's going to really um, start harmonizing with all your planets in Virgo. And, and that's going to feel so good. And so for some of you, you know, you need to look at the relationship you're in and how that's serving you. Is it serving you? And for those of you that are open for relationship, you know, this could be, this could be bringing you a new partner. Absolutely. Because it's new beginnings and it's also completions. Now, another wild thing that's happening here is there's so many planets at the time of this eclipse in water and Mars is also coupled with Uranus at the time of the eclipse and he squares Pluto on the 22nd and then he merges with Uranus on the 26th and then he opposes Jupiter on the 27th. This could be creating some wild stormy weather. So, you know, like for those of us here in the Northeast, we could be getting some uh, major uh, storms as well as California has been getting a lot of water, well needed water in the southern uh, part of the state which is great but then you know to you know it's like when your cup is full and you keep pouring water the water goes everywhere right so you know we don't want flooding um but you know is is uh neptune is really powerful and he rules the seas and i'm seeing stormy weather here uh in february especially at the end of february we could be seeing some real precipitation with all of this pisces energy all these planets in the water quadrant and neptune is going gangbusters here he is coupled with the new moon and he's direct and he's in his own sign he rules pisces he's in pisces he's just going to pull that ocean up on the west coast and um the east coast and we're going to see uh you know probably snow here and uh, you know tons of rain in california and for my uh followers in the southern uh, part of the planet in uh australia new zealand argentina you you could be looking at you know a hurricane um a lot of rain and so this is really interesting and you know, this has got you jazzed up sexually. <laughs> you know, like you could be, you know, in some sort of, you know, romantic partnership or uh, sexual karmic relationship uh, where you're just really, chemistry is incredibly strong with whoever you are uh, matching up with here. So uh, it is really interesting and you know the venus and the mars are together there but they don't perfect because venus is slowing down and she's getting to ready to retrograde she'll do that march 4th through april 15th so they don't perfect again until virgo october 5th at 18 degrees virgo so that's that's the start of something new with virgo um and now it could be happening now because the pisces uh, eclipse is in that area of marriage and partnership and you've got Venus and Mars hooking up here 
uh, <laughs> in February, and like I said, perfection, I mean they make an exact conjunction and they don't, or the exact coupling, and they don't, but they do, how interesting, they do in October for you, and that is um, at 18 degrees Virgo, Venus and Mars perfect. And so that is the start of something new. Could be a new start of a relationship. It could be a new start with you, like you do some sort of makeover. I'll talk about that when we get to October. Um, and so I, I just I wanted to be able to go into more details this month, and and uh, you know because I didn't get to really do that like I like to with the year aheads because I moved and I I only had so much time scheduled, and so. Um, this is a really powerful month for you. Doors are opening for you in love. For those of you open to love, doors are opening for you. And it is going to continue throughout this year with the doors opening. You're doing a lot of work behind the scenes. And think about where you can make an adjustment. Because once you do that, everything falls into place for you this month it's like this cosmic download is coming in for you and you're I see you in all the details and you're loving it you know because you are the master of details and you just love it and you're just like thriving in the details because you figure it out it's like it's like it comes to you it's like Eureka I got it and I make this change or I tur turn here and then BAM everything opens up for you and everything is finishing for you Money looks really good. Money is going to be um, incredibly strong for you. There could be lucrative clients. There could be lucrative customers. There could be uh, restructuring with the money that really uh, brings you new cash. Uh, I'm not seeing so much focused in the career area. It's more about the work that you're already doing. Spiritually, you are growing by leaps and bounds. You're really moving up. Um, and I'm not seeing challenges with the health. Remember, your wealth is in your health. And the better you feel, the more you attract. The better you feel, the more you're ready for. So finish what needs to finish and be open to new love, new opportunities. Life is really falling into place for you. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, favoring, sharing at Google Plus and my videos, Virgo. You're rocking awesome. Thank you for subscribing. You totally rock. And if you would like for me to take a detailed look at your astrology, it's very easy. The link is below in the show more section. It's also up in the cards. So until next time, Virgo, doors are opening for you. Be ready.